13th at 7 p.m. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> Sorry, a little horse with allergies tonight. Fire evacuation, uh, straight right behind you, right out the doors, out to the front of the building. We're down through these set of doors here on my left and down the stairs and out to the back. And if there is an emergency, please uh, walk away as far from the building as you possibly can. Thank you. The secretary, call the roll, please. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, Louis Fiore. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. Uh, Francis Alimo. Here. Kiran Majbudar. Here. Kenneth Holinsky. Here. Vinny Garillo. He's absent. Christian D'Antonio. Here. Nicholas Lefakis. Here. And John Petronella is here. Thank you. Let the record show that all the regular members are here, but if one needs to recuse themselves, then uh, Commissioner Lefakis will be sit studying it tonight as the regular member. Make a motion to approve the minutes of the uh, special meeting on March 30th. So moved. <clears throat> motion made by Second. Vice Chairman Higley, seconded by Vice Chairman DeGrade to accept the minutes. I would like to amend the minutes. Um, basically, when it had the list of those present, we, uh, we left, off, left off Ms. Driver from the uh, staff's office, assistant planner. So uh, would someone make a motion to amend the minutes to show that uh, Ms. Driver was at, at, in attendance? So moved. Motion Second. made by Vice Chairman Higley, seconded by Vice Chairman DeGray to amend the minutes to reflect that Ms. Driver was here at the uh, special meeting. Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, I would also like to amend the minutes uh, during under the paragraph uh, stating roll call. My name is not on the roll call, and I, was, I did attend that meeting. You, you, you did? Yes, you did, Mr. <laughs> Linsky. Any other changes before? No, is there any other <laughs> changes? Is there any other changes? So, so moved then. So, so motion made so by good. Vice Chairman Higley, second by Vice Chairman DeGray, to also amend the minutes to indicate that Commissioner Holinsky was in attendance. Thank you, Kennedy. I missed that. Thank You're you. So quiet. <laughs> any other amendments? Nope. Seeing none, all those in favor of accepting the minutes as amended, please signify by saying aye. 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 Let the record show that it was unanimous. Um, to uh, accept the minutes as amended. Thank you. <clears throat> Everybody has a copy of the town return report. I don't really think there's any formal presentation on that. We all have the one for March 24th. Yep. Okay, thank you. Now we'll move on to public participation. At this point in the meeting, the Planning and Zoning Commission welcomes comments, concerns, and opinions related to planning and zoning in Enfield from anyone who is present, provided that no one may discuss any matter of business at this time that is already elsewhere on the agenda, any matter that is part of an open public hearing of this commission, or any matter where a decision of the commission may be pending, which also includes any pending uh, legal activity. Is there anyone who would like to approach the Planning and Zoning Commission at this time? Anyone who would like to approach the Planning Commission at this time for a third time? Seeing none, public participation is closed. There's no bond releases. There's no presentations tonight. We'll move on to new public hearings whenever the secretary is ready. Okay, Mr. Chair. Um, the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing at their regular meeting on Thursday, April 13th. 2023 at 7 p.m. at the Town Hall Council Chambers at 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following. Public hearing number 3062, 40 Conlin Drive, application for the expansion of a non-conforming structure in the front yard, setback, Roger and Deborah Russell, owner, applicants, map 66, lot 436, R33 zone. Thank you. Is the applicant or uh, representative here? <clears throat> At this point, as chairman of this commission, I am going to uh, be recusing myself from this application due to the fact that uh, Mr. Russell and I have a long history of personal relationship. Our families have been very close, and Mr. Russell and I have done a lot of activities in the community for the last uh, 50, 60, maybe even 70 years. So uh, having said that, um, I just feel it's appropriate that I recuse myself from this, and Commissioner Lefakis will be sitting in my place, and Vice Chairman Higley will be running this meeting. I'm much younger than he inferred. Will you please state your name and address for the record and make sure the light's on so we can hear you, please. Roger Russell, 40 Conlon Drive, Penfield, Connecticut. And, yeah. Deborah Russell, 40 Conlon Drive, Enfield, Connecticut. Okay. 
All right, so um, I want to rebuild my garage. Uh, the story is that uh, right now, it's currently, it's uh, 12 feet wide by about 22 feet deep. Um, you can drive your car into it. You can't open the door because they forgot to accommodate the fireplace that they put inside the garage. So in order to make this repair, I have to make it bigger, and it will um, have to be wider. Um, what I'm proposing is a 26-foot 20, wide by 24-foot deep new garage. It will not be any closer to the road. It will not encroach on the uh, setback, the side setback to my neighbor to the uh, south. Um, along with doing the garage, I'm also going to um, put a hatch, put, a, put an access to the basement. And do, we do not have a hatchway or any other access other than inside the house. Ah. Um, and that's it's one of the benefits of my doing it the way I'm doing it. Okay. So, um, I don't know. That's basically it. It's somewhat straightforward to me. I, if there's any questions or Thank anything you. else I Anyone can Anyone have add. any questions? Frank. Are you putting a full basement underneath the garage? No, no, it's just a regular. So you just garage. while you're digging, you're going to put the hatchway in. Correct. Yeah, it'll be. It's just going to cut into the back uh, half of the back portion of the uh, corner of the uh, of the cellar, and with steps down into the garage. I mean, yeah, the garage down into this basement. Thank you. Uh, I, I saw a note on the plans. The the shed that exists there, so the garage is going basically in its place the, the, the sheds go into the dump after mm -hmm. the i was gonna i was gonna ask if there are no no plans to, to reuse it or, no. or relocate it okay oh sorry i have to close the public hearing uh no i have to ask for public participation are there any concerns anyone want to speak in favor or against this hearing Anyone want to speak in favor or against this hearing? One last time. Anyone want to speak in favor or against this hearing? Okay, if I have no other concerns, I'll close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Okay, any um, comments? Question, no? Linda. Um, this is to the staff, the chair. Is this because of these? This is because of the zone change. Yes. There's, and they're well within their twenty percent, so there's no problems. That's correct. The uh, okay. the application complies with all the other bulk requirements: side yard, rear yard, lot okay. coverage. It's just the uh, that front setback. All right, not a problem. Pretty Thanks. simple. Yep. Oh, excuse me. We had a motion to close the public hearing, but we didn't have a vote. Oh, all in favor of closing the public hearing. All in favor of closing the public hearing, raise your hand. Aye. 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 Sorry. Okay. Now, is there anything else? Roll call, please. Um, I have to read the motion. Oh. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh. Madam, <laughs> Can I hear I have a motion yeah, to approve? Ma Madam, Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve public hearing number 3062, application for a special permit to construct a single-story attached garage at 40 Conlon Drive, Roger and Deborah Russell, owner, applicant, MAP 66, lot 436, R33 zone. Per the reference plans and application materials identified herein and the following 22 conditions of approval. Second. Um, okay, uh, Linda DeGray? Four. Virginia Higley? Four. Francis Alimo? Four. Kiran Majwadar? Four. Kenneth Holinsky? Four. Nicholas Lefakis? Four. And John Petronella is four. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
back. It's good to be back. We miss you, yes. <laughs> you run a much better mission. Thank you. Nice job. Thank you. Okay, everybody ready? Now, Mr. Secretary, we're on to item uh, B, PH 3065ZA. Yes, uh, the Entry Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing at the regular meeting on Thursday, April 13th, 2023 at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers at 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following. Public hearing number 3065ZA, 113 Brainerd Road, application for zone change from R33 to BR, Fast Track Realty, LLC, applicant, John Ferreira, owner, MAP 36, lot 237, R33 zone. Thank you. Is the applicant a representative here tonight? Please come forward and identify yourself for the record, please. And just make sure the mic is on, if you don't mind. Sure. I think you know the routine here. Just pull as close to you as you can, please. Hi. Name is Andy Borgia. I represent Fast Track Realty. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. You have a presentation for us or a description of what you'd like us to consider? Yeah, we're, we're looking to purchase uh, a parcel of a farmland that's abutted to uh, the Mass Mutual uh, property that we're purchasing to convert into a sports facility. And we're looking to uh, convert the farmland to uh, a BR zone uh, to uh, complement our project in order to uh, fit all the fields into the property. Uh, I guess. We're looking to uh, change the zone as part of a during closing of both properties. Thank you. Any commissioners have any questions at this point? I know I have one. At this point, you you have not purchased the property, correct? You're only here representing the your interests and in representing the current owner, correct? Correct. The property's not going to be purchased until uh, we get approvals, if, if we get a site plan approvals. Yeah, so basically you're asking us to rezone this as part of a potential other project that might be coming down the line in front of us. Well, we're asking to, uh, to combine, it'll combine with, with the Mass Mutual property. Uh, because standing alone, I don't think it's, it's no, that's a lot. Not, that's not what you're asking for. That would be a merging of your lots. Basically, you're asking us to change this piece of parcel to business, um, with business regional. Correct. You're not asking to merge. Unfortunately, you're not asking us to merge the properties no. at this point. Correct. Is there any other questions? I have a yes, Commissioner Holinsky. Procedural uh, type question. Uh, being a fairly new member, of the Planning and Zoning Commission, if we approve. Um, this zone change and then the need for the zone change goes away due to the fact that the mass mutual development doesn't get done for some reason okay uh, then it sounds like the owner of that parcel could do something else right uh, so um, at this point should you approve this we could have an effect you, you it's required for the commission to set an effective date so what we've suggested is that we have an effective date for and that has to in order for the effective date to take place the map would have to be filed and the rezone filed into the land records so if that doesn't happen neither does the rezone so the the recommendation would be to set the effective date later in time and i just i want to say it was i can't even remember what the date was right now i, I believe it's uh um, in november november or, 30th 2023 okay. so essentially so essentially our approval would be contingent upon that particular Correct. thing happening okay the, with the other and the and other the, parcels and parcel the pcc has the right to rezone any parcel so you could Theoretically, if this did get filed for some reason, you could always go back and rezone it back. Yeah, but I think I'm going to wait my my questions on it until afterwards because that's again, it all sounds like the cart before the horse. Is there any? Yeah, I have yeah, a question, um, question for the I think we can hold questions for staff until right now. We have questions for the applicant, and then we we'll I have a question public. for staff. So why don't we wait to hold questions for staff after, if you don't mind? Okay. If, you, if you don't mind, yeah. any more questions for the applicant on this? Commissioner Majumdar. The 
small parcel, I see a plan here, let's say C5A, and shows two soccer fields, one and a half actually, that will be on this property, and that's the property you want rezone. My question is, the two soccer fields are part of your overall plan of development of the entire mass mutual property or buildings? Yes. So if you had two less soccer fields, would that matter? <clears throat> Yeah, we actually need 11, 11 fields. That shows 10. We actually have one on the third floor of the indoor building, which is... Indoor. Yeah, we, we're going to put one on the third floor of the indoor, but that, so we can have 11 fields, because we're limited to, uh, to space. So you definitely need these two. That's to cause field. our business model, yes. I see. Thank you. You're welcome. And, and you know, we, we could, the applicant can't come back after we hear from the public, if you like, or you want to have questions. I for just the have a question for the applicant. Sure. Um, is there a sense of urgency to get this done right away? This particular uh, zoning change to that plot, for some reason, is there is there an urgent well, reason? We can't move forward with the project if we if we don't have the the the, the space to build uh, the eleven fields on uh, the, the fields on it. Yeah. Okay. So essentially, if you didn't have this rezoning, it really doesn't allow the other project to go forward, correct? Pretty much. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. But, but my question, too, is, again, you could purchase this property now and then come back and us come back to and merge this lot into the Mass Mutual one if you so desire. I mean, basically, I guess my thing is it's convenient for you as a developer to go this route. I guess that's my point. There are other options that are available to you. I don't, I don't understand your question, Mr. Fiore, but at the end of the day, if I purchase the property now, I don't want a piece of farmland if I can't build a sports facility yeah. on Mass Mutual. Yeah. Again, I, I totally understand your predicament. That's not our predicament. That's your predicament. Understood. And yeah. the, one of my predicaments is the fact that if we grant this on whether it has an effective date or not, and if your Mass Mutual project conversion to the sports fully falls apart, we're left at a business area in the middle of a residential area. And that's the part that concerns me is because then at that point, that particular owner, which wouldn't be you, could then turn around and do something else in that property. So that's my, that's my concern. I know it's not your concern, but that's my concern. Yes, but as Ms. Witten uh, uh, explained to you, that it would not be valid if we didn't purchase the land. Uh, well, we'll, 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 so it wouldn't we'll, be valid. We'll, we'll, we'll yeah. ask staff sure. that a little bit more later on going down the road. So I'd have to have, I have to mm -hmm. pretty re reassured on that. So we have a question. For, the applicant can't come back. So if you, don't, you don't, I think someone wants to come up and speak, but you're, you'll be coming back. So we're sure. not done. Is there anyone in the public who would like to speak for or against this project? Come on up. I'll make my comments short and sweet so you guys can all get back to what you're doing. Identify. Zach Zanoni, 6 Howard Street, Enfield, Connecticut. Thank you. Uh, I don't have any prepared remarks, but I just wanted to issue my full and unconditional support uh, for this zone change. I ultimately think, based on uh, reading what I saw in the master packet, I understand it's at 3.78 acres, and that's below the minimum lot size for BR. Um, but because it's a budding BR, I think ultimately it could be beneficial for the town. Um, and also, I truly believe that it's in accordance with the goals of not only our 2011 POCD, but also the one that we're going to be um, taking effect in May. Um, there has been a multitude of resident concerns that have been raised. I think the developer has been incredibly responsive, um, specifically when it came to the aspect of Brainerd Park. And now that we have this one more piece here that we need and is imperative to the project's passage. Um, and I think when while I'm the only person speaking tonight, most residents that had the most significant concerns about this project had concerns about the other aspect of the project that's no longer included within it, and most were supportive with it um, as it was presented without Brainerd Park, which is what we have here today. Um, I think this is a, a win for Enfield. Of course, this is a methodical process, and we're one step of many um, from getting through it. But I certainly think if we make sure we dot our I's and cross our T's that this can be a true benefit uh, for the town of Enfield. And I know that's your hard work to do to make sure that um, it's delivered and palatable for the public. Um, but I just wanted to issue my support of this project. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else like to speak for or against this or have any comments? Seeing none, the applicant can come back and join us.
And I, I just want to make something clear too also is the zone change is basically going to be on the successful closing of both properties. If both properties don't close, then there's not going to be a zone change. And I think that could be stipulated if I'm correct, right, Ms. Witten? We, we cannot set conditions on right. a rezone. Okay. Correct. So, but you could perhaps explain to us that you, that the um, owner of the property does not have the current right to file the, the rezone. So I don't know what, what conditions that you have set with them as far as purchasing the property. Yeah, the, uh, the conditions of uh, purchasing the property are solely based on uh, site plan approvals to move forward with the project. And if we don't get site plan approvals to move forward, and then we're not purchasing the property, and there'll be no zone change. Jeez. Sounds like a shotgun's been put to my head. Because basically, I wanna, I wanna, I'm going to report right now. I'm looking at my, my staff's comments here, our staff's comments here. Um, and I'm just going to, for the record, I'm going to read basically what it says right in here. The subject parcel does not meet the minimum five acre for BR on its own with only 3.78 acres. Should a request come before the PNZ for this specific parcel on its own, which is exactly what this is, again, because I'm, I'm segregating this between your proposal, because I think this is the cart before the horse. I know from a financial standpoint, in your viewpoint, it's not, and I totally understand that and respect that. It would be unusual to approve the parcel for rezone as a non-conforming lot amongst a predominantly residential area. So, I mean, myself, personally, that's just, you know, I'll have more to say later. So can you please explain to me, can, can you please explain to me the comment about effective date of rezone shall be November 30th, 2023? Because what happens mm -hmm. if we grant this tonight and and I have no idea whether, you know, because we don't have any plans on the redevelopment of mass neutral property. All we know is what we know, and all we know is what we don't know, mm -hmm. right? Because we don't have anything officially in front of us. So what would happen to this zone if that mass mutual development redevelopment fails? What happens now to this piece of parcel if it gets zoned tonight or tomorrow or next week? By setting the effective date of November 30th, it cannot be rezoned until that date. And the applicant has informed me that that is their kind of drop dead date for their due diligence. So if if something goes awry and they do not move forward with the mass mutual project and merge this lot into it with approvals and so on and so forth, then it doesn't get filed and it it, it drops. So it would be the applicant that would have to file. So what, the, the so what would happen document. if the applicant did come in front of us? And I'm, I'm just hypothetical. So yeah. please don't take this as this is going to happen. I just need to think all this through. And I think the commission needs to hear all this. So what would happen? The applicant comes in front of us in August. Mm -hmm. and, and we deny it. Now what happens to this zone? Then they don't file the, the rezone and it doesn't become well, Somebody effective. else can. Mr. Ferreira can. Because the app, because this stays, this isn't Mr. Porsche's. This is he's just here representing them. That owner of that land can then file it. Yep. Theoretically, yes. Thank you. That's my point here. He could file, but he won't be approved because it's not big enough, right? Again, so that's a hypothetical that, question. You're, you're making a statement tonight, to we as we well, right? Tonight, we're waiving all that. Okay. That's th that's my point here. Well, they merge the two pieces of parcel are merging together, so that's. So, so again, why don't we just wait till you come in, you purchase it, and you merge them together, and we, then you're not even here. We don't have a problem. Yeah. And like, I don't mean to be dominating here. I'm just I, yeah. because you can see I've been thinking this through for a long time. Again, that's my point here, is that we expect you to come in front of us with the big project. We we welcome it. So whenever you can, you're ready. But again. Yeah. Again, we have to protect this neighborhood for what happens if, you know, worst scenario here. Well, let me ask you, some, uh, Mr. Fury, if uh, take Mass Mutual out of the equation mm -hmm. and uh, Mr. Ferrara came for a zone change on his property, would you grant it? Well, I can't. I, I you can't. wouldn't. You I wouldn't can't, because I can't it's. answer that. Well, I can because I know that it's not big enough. It, it doesn't meet the requirements. Yep. The only reason it's going to meet the requirements is because it's going to merge with the mass mutual property. We could waive the requirements. So, again, I'm not okay. saying we would. I guess my point. I'm not saying we would. I'm, we're just doing hypothetical here. Yeah. Commissioner DeGray. I'm sorry, Commissioner. Uh, to the uh, chair, to yep. staff. If 
this gets passed tonight, it goes to Krog, yes? Mm, no. Or does it go, when, I guess my question it's, is, it's, is <clears throat> when would it go to Krog? It doesn't need to go to Krog because it's not within 500 feet of, of, the, of the town okay, boundary. Okay, so we don't need Krog to no. give their blessing. So I just wanted to make sure that I understand that if if we don't if this is just a request and if it doesn't happen by November 30th the um, the plans come to us and we approve everything and Mr. Boyja purchase purchases everything this never goes into effect am I cl clear with that I, I, I want to make sure I'm completely clear. <laughs> I'm not sure if I have totally followed that, but if, um, first of all, one, if, uh, if this comes needed, to us as this as, effective date, November mm -hmm. 30th, everything comes before us before November 30th, mm -hmm. and hypothetically everything gets approved because, you know. Yeah. Then they would file it. Then it, it would file and then go into effect. But prior right. to that, this and if it, this it will not go into effect, even if it got filed, it will not go into effect until that date. Okay. And if it doesn't come before us for whatever reason, and I don't, you know, we don't know what could happen tomorrow, and it doesn't come before us, this is like it never happened. Right. It would be if it never gets filed, it's null and void, okay. and we could go back and clarify that after the fact. Okay. That I want. I I just needed that to be clear in my little head. Right. All right. That, thank but that's you. kind of incomplete because if Mr. Borgia doesn't come in front of us before November 30th with his app with the Mass Mutual thing, Mr. Ferreira can I then file it, yeah, and now I that now that change that. stays yes, in effect. I, I understand. That that's that's the role that we're playing here. Yeah, I understand. Yeah what your point okay. is, but I just okay. want to make oh, okay. sure I cleared this okay. for my mind. Okay, Thank sorry. You. Didn't mean to intercede. I wasn't sure where you were <laughs> no, going. No, yeah. Commissioner Lambo was here. Go ahead. I'll ask later. So, uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I need to know yes, what's sir. going on, maybe to the applicant or to staff, what's going on between now and that date in November? And I think it's important mm -hmm. uh, to see, to hear, maybe even the people at home Sure. So they understand. So, so basically, you know, we're asking for the zone change because we really can't move forward if we don't have the proper zone change on this property. Right. But logistically, and what's happening? So, so right, yeah, now so, then, yeah. So right now, we're uh, we have our architects and engineers designing uh, drainage elevations. Uh, you know, preparing site plans to submit to the to the town. Mm -hmm. So, is the application? Pro no. So I need all the logistics. So is the application process going to start with the town between now and November for all your other approvals to come before zoning or wetlands or could we have a November date is there a bunch well, of stuff going to happen uh, it hopefully it happens before November 30th right so what again between now and November 30th you're having engineering work done have site work done correct are you meeting are you planning on meeting with staff are you having a meeting with um, all the department heads. Yeah, we we, ha in, we already had an initial. Can help yes. with this question. Are yeah, you we already in had it. Yes, we already had an initial art meeting, and uh, we're preparing another art meeting as soon as the uh, site plan, the elevations, and everything are implemented. And be, be, because for me, you know, I everybody knows this created a big uproar in the community, and I think like you know, Mr. Zanone, who testified tonight, you don't see anybody here tonight in a opposition. So the biggest thing I think the people were upset about was the Brainerd Park issue. And that's off the table now. So with that, there was a lot of organizations that were speaking to the council and, you know, throughout the different meetings in favor. You know, uh, soccer teams, uh, girls uh, softball. Uh, we heard many. I watched the meetings. People were in favor saying the community is in need of this. Yes. So I think what we need to try to do is to find a way to let him do his due diligence. I know that we got that date out there of November 30th to, to have this move forward and get it to the land board, 
the various land boards for approval because I think as a community, there's a lot of people that would like to see this happen. So, and I don't know the legal logistic part of it. If we don't do this tonight, is that, you know, going to make this whole thing go away? And is the community and, you know, the area going to leave, going to lose the opportunity to have that facility? Um, so that's my concern. I, I I understand the chairman's questions here, but um, that can we use that November 30th date to assure that the concerns here won't happen and he can do his due diligence? Because what I'm afraid of, if we say no tonight, it's over. Um, and I don't think that's what the community wants. I think the community wants to see this happen. And I, knowing that we have that huge office complex vacant and, you know, post COVID, nobody's going back to offices anytime quick. So I think there's a lot of importancy for this to come together. And I, got, I would like to find a way, but assure that that Brainerd Road property is not going to sit there if this thing falls apart as a zone change. I, I really think, you know, we need fields. You know, everybody knows we need fields. People can't get. So I just left Mark Carmel. I was up there cooking this afternoon. There's people playing soccer on Mark Carmel's field because we're letting, as Mark Carmel, we're letting them use it because there's no fields. So I'm kind of stuck here. I, I would like to see this him be able to do his due diligence, but protect the community in a way where if it doesn't work out, we're not going to mess up a neighborhood. So I, I'm sorry to be long winded here, if but I, I think it's important if, that we try to figure out. If I may intercede, if I, if I, thank, if I, if I may for you. Thank, thank you. My, my problem. Thank you, sir. My for your problem, answers. Yeah, thank, my problem as commissioner is at this point, my personal opinion is we need to be looking at this as an individual application not muddying it with the mass mutual because you can't because this is what's happening it's muddy with the mass mutual mm -hmm. the cart before the horse and, and i certainly understand the applicant's reason for doing it this way Don't get me wrong, I, I, I might even do the same way if i was in his shoes but i'm not in his shoes i'm the commissioner here this is this is we have to look at this on its own on its own whether the mass mutual property or the redevelopment of it comes to fruition or not that, not, that's just where I'm coming from. I understand what you're saying, but I think you have to look at this as its own merit and not muddy it with the other one. The, to me, the proper way would have been you came in with this on the same night as, as your proposal to us about redeveloping the mass mutual property. To me, that's the proper way to do it. But that's just myself. Go ahead, Commissioner Petronello. Yeah, uh, I have a question for staff through, through the chair. Um, I, I hate to be redundant, but the, the way I understand it is we cannot impose a condition that would make the approval effective if this property effective when it merges with the mass mutual property that is that a fair statement we we can't impose that okay that is a fair statement and staff tried to kind of think of ways of doing right. that but just legally we the, this commission may not set conditions on a rezone right. Right. can the applicant make that request I, I don't, they can make the request, but you don't have the right to actually set a condition. Right. So, otherwise we would have. I'm asking him if he wants to make, if he wants to set that condition <laughs> if for us to approve so with his what, application. What the applicant might be able to do is reassure the commission as to what might happen between now and November 30th. Mm -hmm. um, you know, d d does. Mr. Ferreira have the right to file this document based on your agreements with them. That That is still an unknown. Or do you, or is there something that you had in writing or something that says that, you know, this will only ha occur if we purchase the property and then we said, well, you, the applicant, would file the rezone application or the rezone document? I'm sure that uh, Mr. Ferrara would put something in writing stipulating that if this project doesn't move forward, that he's not going to ask for a rezoning of his uh, of his property. I, I, I guess it gets into more of a legal question than anything else. Able to get these oh. questions? Yeah. Make a motion. Any other discussion? Want to make a motion, man, Vice uh, Chairman? 
I'd like to make a motion to table this application until we get questions answered on the legality of how we go about protecting the zone should this not occur. And I think it's also, we, there's a motion made, but I just to add on that, I, I think we want to leave the public hearing open. Yes. We're not going to close a public so, hearing. Uh, yes, well, definitely. Well, one, one of my uh, questions to you is, if this doesn't close on November 30th and merge with the Mass Mutual property, there is there's no request for a zone change. It's not going to it's not going to change, and you don't have to approve that. But you're you're making a situation here where possibly that we're not able to move forward because we don't know if that zone change is going to be approved. And we're looking to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to get through site plan approvals, and not knowing if this parcel, which is be part of the Mass Mutual property is going to be approved for a zone change. I think I think what, I, there's a motion on the table. There's a motion on the floor to ta table. Is there a second to table it? Second. Yes, second. Seconded by Commissioner DeGray. So we really, there's a motion on the floor to table this. We're going to be working with staff. You have questions. Staff has questions. We're going to table this. We're going to get some of this answered. And we'll, we'll we hopefully pick this back up in the next meeting two weeks from now. So there's a motion made to table. There's a second in discussion on the table. Yes. All those, discussion. Yeah, yes. go ahead. So. This is two weeks with staff. I'm sure you can work together with staff. Um, the owner of the property, if you can have him come to the next hearing and maybe have something in writing that he's not going to file that. Whatever you need to do for due diligence, uh, back to the due diligence again. It's only a two week delay. I think you can continue doing your site plans. It's two weeks. So, you know, you can still move forward. And if you come back, I think some of the questions and some of the concerns can be answered. Simply, if you bring Mr. Ferreira and an affidavit, uh, maybe you go to, uh, you know, have something signed and have it notarized. Maybe staff can help you with the legalities of it. Okay, so my question is, if, if we get an affidavit from Mr. Ferreira, is that going to solve the issue here? We don't. We have to wait to the we next don't know. meeting. We, we, we'll discuss it when, yeah. when you get that. Do right? everything you can do. Do everything you can do. For your due diligence. Okay, and time, time is the essence for us, and I, I know I it's understand. only two weeks away, you know. This is better, than, a, this is better than us denying it. Tonight. There's a motion to table, Frank. Well, well discussion. We're, no, discussion's closed. Right, no, but, with us, not okay. with the applicant. So I'm saying, I understand. think this is better for the community yep. on my, yep. what I said, yep. rather I than... Um, yep. You know, turning them down and give yep. them some wiggle room, if you would, to come totally back. Agree. Yeah. Totally agree. That's why we're doing this. Yes, I, yeah. You can work with staff, have questions. Staff understands what we want. So there's a motion on the floor to table. Seeing discussion over all those in favor, table signify by saying aye. 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 The record shows unanimous to table this application. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to the next. Thank you. Okay, unfortunately, there was an, uh, an, uh, a minor error in our uh, agenda. The um, PH 3059 29 Moody Road is not a public hearing, it's a site plan review. Um, but seeing that, we do need, I do need a motion to take it off the table because we did table it. So I'll entertain a motion to uh, remove from the table PH 3059. So moved. Motion made by Vice Chairman DeGray, is there a second? Seconded by Vice Chairman Higley to remove PH 3059 from the table. All those in favor, signify aye. by saying aye. Aye. Let the record show is unanimous. Application or representative, come forward. Thank you very much. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Tim Kuhn with J.R. Russo and Associates out of East Windsor, here with Adam Oliveri, representing the applicant, 29 Moody Road, LLC. Um, good to see you, gentlemen. Good to see you as well. As you recall, we did make a full presentation at the meeting on March 9th, at which point we were uh, requesting both a site plan approval and a special permit. Um, and at that time, you will recall that we withdrew the application for the special permit. So this application is strictly for the site plan approval at this point in time. Um, we did receive uh, the memo from Matt, the planner, uh, assistant planner, and which he suggests a number of conditions uh, to address some minor uh, remaining revisions to the plan, if you will. And um, of these, um, we, one condition 21A, uh, there was some back and forth today on, and I believe Matt has submitted a revised 21A condition, and I just want to know, let you know that we've seen that and we are okay with that. Um, the only other commission, or the only other condition that I would like to bring up is uh, commission 21E3. Which, which, I'm sorry, which one? 21E3 which is the condition that calls for the landscaped islands along the face of the building. 
That's the uh, 10 foot islands along the building? Yes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. And Let me in, interrupt. Go ahead. In that condition, it specifies the width to be 22 feet. And 22 feet is actually the exact length between the two overhead doors. And we would like to request that that 22 feet could be reduced to 20 feet so that the curb does not go right to the edge of the door, so that there's a little wiggle room there between the, the curbing and the doorway. And other than that, we have reviewed all the conditions, and they are acceptable to us. So if anybody has any questions, we have nothing further to present because we've done it all at the last meeting. Thank you. Is there, looking down the aisle here, any questions for anyone? Okay, we kind of exhausted things, of almost the things last time you guys were here, which was about a month ago, I think, almost? Yeah. 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 So I just again, I just want to review this for the record um, very quickly. Um, there was a variety of, of, of uh, conditions here, um, particularly site specific conditions number nine. I don't know if you have your document in front of you. Yes. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. I know. I know you've you've agreed to all these. I just want to get it for the record. I'll wait for you to catch up. Yeah. Let me know when you're all set. Yes. Yes, so 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Of course, all the ones in 21, except um, I think the secretary is going to make a motion to change 21A to, to the new that you worked with staff. Mm -hmm. Also, basically, all the 21s are pretty, uh, other than the uh, change that you're requesting on uh, 21E3 from 22 feet to 20, but there's a variety of uh, conditions there on, on uh, 21, which I think you've agreed to all of them. Yes. So having said that, just wanted to get that in the record. Does, does staff have any comments any further with this? No, other than to just thank um, Mr. Coons and the applicant for working with us. I know it was kind of a race to the finish on a couple of items. Uh, we apologize for that, but we didn't want to wait and hold up the project any longer. We wanted to get through tonight and, and get you going. So, um, And we have no objection, obviously, to the 20 foot instead of the 22. That's just common sense. So. Okay. That's all. Thank you. We also uh, have for the record that John Kibler, our town engineer, sent us some more information about the, um, I guess, the site. Site distance. It's, yeah, site line. Any questions? Any more questions from the staff? Do we have to add these? No, not John. No, I don't think so, no. no. Any other questions from staff? No? Any questions from the commissioners? Okay. Seeing, I'll take a motion to approve, I guess, with a couple of minor changes, if possible, Mr. Secretary. Uh, yeah, Mr. Chair, um, I'd like to make a motion to approve uh, public hearing number 3059 with conditions and modifications, um, the application for a site plan approval to allow 19,800 square feet of multi-tenant industrial building with associated parking at 29 Moody Road. 29 Moody Road LLC applicant, 29 Moody Road LLC owner, J.R. Russo agent, map 75, lot 35, I-1 zone, for the reference plans, reports and application materials, uh, and 30 conditions listed with the following modification to, um, uh, to eliminate condition 21A and add the new specific condition as follows. The property owner shall be responsible to maintain the sight line along the frontage of 29 and 31 Moody Road as shown on the plan and profile of record at all times, including but not limited to removing vegetation, snow, and or other implements. E3, which is on next Oh, page. I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah, what do we do? 20, 21 E3. Okay, all right. And uh, on, tw on, on condition number 21 E3, uh, we're going to change... Um, from 22 feet wide to 20 feet wide. Thank you. Motion is made and with the conditions and the changes to a couple of the conditions. Is, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Holinsky. Any discussion on that? Commissioner Majumdar? 
Uh, is this for a public hearing 3059, which is different from the site plan application? Yes. What so is it we're doing here? We're doing a site plan application, not a not public, the public Not the public hearing. hearing. I mean, when I opened it, I mentioned that, yes. I think the uh, motion made had some kind of a text or words to the effect of public hearing 3059. Because that's what it's filed under. So that's what we do? Yes. Okay. Any other questions? See now when the, when the secretary is ready for a roll call. Uh, Lou Fiore. Yes. Proof. Linda DeGray. Approve. Virginia Higley. Four. Francis Alimo. Four. Kiran Majbudar. Four. Kenneth Helensky. Four. And John Petronell is four. But the record shows unanimous decision to approve this site plan refute with the uh, conditions and the amendments. Thank you very okay, much. Good luck, good luck with your project, gentlemen. Thank you. Moving on now to SPR 1914, whenever the secretary is ready. Uh, SPR number 1914, Seven Hazard Avenue, application to convert vacant tenant space from professional services into a casual restaurant. Meriki Restaurant Group applicant, GNR Properties LLC owner, MAP 45, Lot 10, BR Zone. Hey, Dean, sir. Good evening. Is the applicant and representatives here? If you need to identify yourselves, please, for the record. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michelle Baker. Um, I currently reside at 500 West Avenue um, in Norwalk, Connecticut. I'm uh, Ken Shanky and Meraki Restaurant Group, which is actually the restaurant group that owns Jersey Mike's. And the better half, Audrey Poynton, is not here, so she's the 51% uh, owner, so. <laughs> Good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Could you just, uh, you know, briefly, however, just explain uh, your application to us, please? Yeah, if you want. I, I uh, could do it. No problem. Start, no, Why don't you just pull yeah. the mic a little closer to you? Yep, I yep. will. Uh, jump into it. Okay, no problem. Kind of tight. Um, yeah, so as mentioned, uh, the proposed scope is to pretty much convert the existing use well change of use um, the current uses of i believe a barber shop spot is vacant we would like to convert our <coughs> change of use to an a2 space eating and drinking establishment um, yeah so pretty much i know that we have submitted our package and received a few comments i believe the team has uh, revised accordingly. Uh, just to touch upon anything site related, uh, I believe there is no drive through, there is no outdoor seating, and we also, uh, you know, listen to uh, any comments that you have as it pertain to the parking. And um, based on the code of ordinance, we believe that there's a minimum of 66 spaces required. Our proposed scope will have 73, three of which will be ADA spots. Um, I mean, just to give you some more information, uh, the opera hours of operation will be from you know Monday through Sunday, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Um, we anticipate uh, there will be 20, or occupant load will be 20 plus five employees. Um, we don't believe there will be any changes to the existing access. Um, I mean, I think I could go on, but I'll let. That's pretty much the proposed scope. Anything like that? No, just the change of use. Um, we're, you know, my wife and I live in Summers, 30 Sunset Drive in Summers, Connecticut. And I guess I just from a personal standpoint, we very vested in the town of Enfield. My wife owns a boutique in town. We have our offices in town. And it's just uh, another opportunity, as I would say, to give careers to certain members of our organization. We have four stores and we're looking to develop more starting with Enfield and that was our first hope four years ago by coming to Enfield with Jersey Mike. So just trying to create some more careers for people, that's all. Yeah, great. Thank you very much. Any questions for the commissioners? Any questions by staff? We just did want to note and we worked this out with the applicant that you'll see a condition number 12 in the draft that relates to uh, the requirement to hook up to the yep. grease trap. Yep. There is an existing there, and uh, they will be connecting, yep. and we've been coordinating with the health district on that. So post-approval, we'll wrap up the details, yep. but there is a condition in there relative to that. Yep. That's it. Yep. Great. Yeah, thank you. So yep, go ahead, Commissioner Lima. So um, on that grease trap that's there, is that 
what, what use was it? Not from the initial uh, Abdals, was it? Mm -hmm. No. Well, there's an existing restaurant. Was it Chipotle? Chipotle, it's a Chipotle there. So I think it's a 500 gallon. Right. So it seems to be sufficient. So it was the, from Chipotle, the, not Abdals. Uh, I, I'm not familiar. It would be with Abdals. very, very old. Yeah, very old. Yeah. Abdals. I, right. Yeah. I apologize. That's before my time, I guess. Right. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was Bickford's. You're right. Yeah. Bickford's. Yeah. yeah. So but the w be, we don't. So yeah, yeah. So water pollution control is going to make sure everything's going to yep. hunky dory. Okay, correct. Because it could correct. be very old, a very yeah. old grease trap. Yeah. Yep. And I want to. I want to thank staff because I don't know if I could share this with you guys. That was one of the things based on one of the questions you brought up. One of the last applicants we had back, we kind of forgot. So you know, staff and I talked about making sure they always ask that question about the grease taps, especially in Grease Alley. Yeah. You and I know where Grease Alley is, so we want to make sure that uh, that's that's done. Thank you, staff, for and, making and, sure it's in for, there. And for the applicant, we don't want to see any problems. Right. You know, once no, you open right. up and things come backing up into your into your use, yeah. I mean, that's not going to be pretty. So yeah, especially <laughs> since the main line goes down St. James, and that has a oh. tendency to clog before we make grease traps mandatory. So, <laughs> okay. right. Thank you. Thank, okay, you, thank Mr. you, Chair. Any other questions? Yeah. Commissioner D'Antonio? Can you just uh, elaborate? I see it's a takeout restaurant. I've not heard of the, this this particular one before. Mm -hmm. Is there indoor dining and and uh, seating inside? Yes. Uh, teriyaki Man is kind of a fresh concept. It's based out of Seattle. There's about 200 stores nationwide, and we're going to be the first in Connecticut with three other sites already in development. Uh, that being said, it's 70% takeout, 30% dine-in. Uh, I have visited probably 20 of the stores around the country. Just I do my random searches to kind of investigate, see what they're about. It's a fresh concept, so similar to Jersey Mike's, I would say. We chop up seven fresh vegetables every day. Teriyaki sauces are uh, from Seattle, so it's all Seattle-based, and it's all wok-based. So it's rice, white rice, brown rice, fried rice, noodles, tofu, vegan bowls as well. Um, so it's been, they've been in business probably for 20 years when it originally started out in Seattle. But it's the dine-in portion of it is seating for about 10 to 12. But of the stores that I've been in, most of the order in is it's a lot of takeout, and a lot of walk in, walk out. And I was probably one of the two people sitting inside in Vegas when I visited eight stores in four hours. So <laughs> I was a little full by the time it was done. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? Any, nothing from our from staff? Mr. Take a motion to approve. Hey, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve SPR number 1914 application to locate a restaurant in an existing 1,380 square foot unit at 7 Hazard Avenue, G plus R property, owner LLC, Mar Mariaki Restaurant Group applicant. Alexandra Vera, applicant's representative, map 45, lot 10, BR zone. Per the reference plans, reports, and application materials listed herein with the following modifications uh, uh, tw and 23 conditions listed. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Holinsky. Motion made by the Secretary, seconded by Commissioner Holinsky. Any discussion on motion? Seeing none, whenever you're ready, Mr. Secretary, for roll call. Uh, Lou Fiore? Yes, approve. Linda the Great. Four. Virginia Higley. Four. Francis Alimo. Four. Kiran Majmudar. Four. Kenneth Helensky. Four. And John Petronella is four. But the record shows unanimous approval for this application. Good luck, gentlemen. Thank and you. Just, when do you, what's your tentative <laughs> opening date? Do you have a shot at it? Or? That's soon enough. No. <laughs> <laughs> actually, they've, uh, all the plans are done. They've actually submitted plans to health already to kind of get the ball rolling on that. So all architectural plans and drawings are done. So great. I have a contractor, same guy that did the one down the street, and we've already met with Ray and Scott uh, prior a couple months ago, kind of going over our layouts and plans to make sure we have the right yeah. seating capacity and load as well. So great. Well, good luck. All right. Thank you, you guys opening much, up. You guys. Thank you. Thank you. Guys. Have a safe ride home. And come by the eclectic Peacock anytime. My wife will appreciate. Okay, whenever, now we're moving on to XSP 2301, whenever the secretary is ready. Yep, uh, application XSP number 23-01155 Raffia Road, application to construct a single-story structure near the athletic fields containing toilet rooms and concession stand and to add a canopy to the main building over the kitchen deliveries area, JFK Middle School Renovation Building Committee applicant. Town of Enfield owner, map 68, lot 149, R88 zone. 
Thank you. Is the applicant <laughs> you're standing? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Identify. Is it working? Hello. Working. My name is Bruce Kellogg. I'm a principal with the architecture firm of JCJ Architecture here in Hartford. Um, you probably know this project. Remember it from a few years ago. This is a uh, an addition to the uh, JFK Middle School renovation project, which is almost complete. Um, there's two elements. One is a concession stand. A uh, small building we're going to place between the uh, sock, uh, the lacrosse field, the baseball field, and the soccer field. And the other is a covering, canopy covering at the delivery entrance. Both of these were requested through Enfield to be added to the project if possible. The building committee has found a way to get these included within. Um, so I, I think you'll be pretty excited. As you can see on the floor plans there, um, uh, that first floor plan has the concession building. There's a little box there where you can see where it's located. I will see if I can move this forward. There's the floor plan. The second sheet shows the floor plan. The, the concession building is, is just a small building. It's the concession area on the left that you see there is uh, really to serve uh, sodas, coffee, uh, packaged foods. We are, there is not a kitchen in there. There's no grease trap. We are not preparing foods. Step ahead. Uh, grease, so there's there's no food preparation at all going on in there. It's just meant to to serve. Um, the other, there's two toilet fixtures in each toilet room. Um, that was a need. Rather than have a long, lengthy discussion about whether you want people going up into the school when there's events, obviously you don't. You'd prefer to have it there. We have a small storage area, mechanical room. This is a seasonal building. So during the winter, uh, we've made provisions to drain the systems down. Um, uh, the, uh, all the controls for the systems and stuff are, will be locked in, uh, in a safe place. So um, it's pretty much uh, straightforward. Um, the image you see there on the third sheet um, is standing on the road, looking towards straight out is the baseball field. To the left, you just see the edge of a fence. Oh, Softball my field. Fault. My fault. Oh, softball field. Um, the two nets you see there are just beyond those nets is about where this building will go. Um, so you, have, you can get a frame of reference. To the right in the, in the foreground uh, where the, the paving circles, that's where the two basketball courts are. And just beyond that would be the lacrosse field. Those are all existing. This just uh, this plan, which is, is hard to read, but uh, this utilities, we were trying to tap them off of uh, the electric off of the uh, lights at the basketball court. We couldn't. So we're going back to the building uh, for uh, electric. We're also taking, and we have two, uh, a pump to pump the uh, water back up to the sewer system um, in this, this building. Again, it's a very limited use, so it's just the detail of the pumps. Uh, Obviously, as the shop drawings get submitted in, I'm sure the appropriate people on the agencies will be looking at these. The building itself is a concrete block structure, a wood trust frame, painted, uh, shingles on it. Again, very utilitarian. Um, what you see here is, is an image of what it looks like. Again, block, doors, um, one roll-up screen where the concessions is so that people can be served on that end. This is from uh, Gilvain, who's a construction manager. I just wanted to show this because I know I'm going to get asked the question, well, can you use the fields while this is being built? The answer is yes. Um, you can see in the uh, center right there where the building location is, um, Gilbane's going to take a temporary walk around the area where we're building this. They're fencing it off. Um, the green area is just showing kind of a site logistics of areas that potentially there's some, some work involved. Um, but the softball field at the top of the sheet, the baseball field to the right, those will be usable. The other, the other request was to put a uh, canopy over the delivery ent entrance off the kitchen uh, on the back of the school. So here's, a, this, here's just a site photo of, of where it is. You, if those of you that have been around the back there, there's a wood fence around it. That double door there to the left of the car is where the entrance is. You're looking actually straight across uh, the road towards the uh, softball field. The canopy itself, just uh, four steel posts. Um, 
with some X bracing and a, a metal roof structure, uh, just draining, the water is draining back to the existing roof um, rather than on the site, because if it goes on the site, it would go down that driveway and then obviously in the colder months, you could get potential icing. So, um, and there's plenty of capacity on the existing roof to handle that. Here's another image of what it looks like. And I think that's, that's the extent of the presentation. We've submitted documents to uh, the appropriate uh, people. And so we have a list of comments, I think, that planning has given us. Thank you. First of all, I, I want to thank you, because this is what we're kind of looking for. So thank you so much for getting this done into us tonight, because we basically had the application in general thrust, but not the detail we were looking for. So Ho we, hopefully it answers all the questions. Thank you very much. I'm much appreciated. Any questions from the commission? To can, any questions? Yep. yep. Just, just a quick question. Um, what is the timeline to have this built and ready for use? Since I know we're getting close to the end of the school year, but we got an, another school year starting in September. So, just so about the kids. So. Um, the uh, Gilbane has already started to put in motion uh, procurement for materials. Uh, I believe they actually have gone out on a limb and ordered some of the doors because of long lead times, and we've all heard those horror stories. They want to start this right away, get documents in, get a permit, get, uh, get this uh, constructed. Their goal is to have it done, um, I'm going to say September. Um, the hope is August, but the reality is it probably will le leak into September. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Lionel? Through the Chair and Staff, did you receive the WPC uh, sign-off that's uh, under department comments? Uh, yes, we did. Yeah, it's fairly simple. Um, just that one line, and really, again, the capacity is really not that much of an issue. It's, it's not like they have, like, you know, seven or eight bathroom stalls in a, in a lavatory type of thing, so... It's a pretty simple system. So WPCA was, was all set. WPCA has been a little bit of a challenge lately because of staffing mm -hmm. kind of issues. So it's a little bit more work to, to get that confirmation, but. <clears throat> so they're pumping the sewage mm -hmm. up to the main sewer line, correct? Is that what I hear you said? Yes. Okay. And so they signed off on the pumping mechanisms and all that? Well, that, that wouldn't occur at the site plan stage. They'll do that when they, before they actually pull permits for the installations okay. themselves. So at this point, they just basically look at the feasibility. Mm -hmm. and That's uh, going to be uphill there pretty much. Right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, quite a hill. Uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a run, yes, but the pumps, the pumps right. were sized by the engineers, and yep. Gilbane will be submitting the actual pump for review okay so and you also said there's no cooking going on there and just no cooking no so is there uh sinks uh in the for washing hands obviously in the bathrooms there's sinks in the concession areas there's sinks. yeah there, there's sinks so you're gonna have yeah. water you're gonna have yeah. obviously the bathroom water and you, and you get some water to, to clean up in in the concessions but they're not they're not preparing food okay it's all going to be prepackaged. okay all right very good thank you I would imagine they're going to be good-sized pumps, I would think. They're going to pump up the hill. Yes, I'm sure they are. Yeah. Yeah. All right, seeing no questions, is there a motion to approve? Why are we talking about sewer lines so much lately? I don't know. Jeez, it seems like, that way. It's like the last couple of meetings. It's been all about sewers here. <laughs> it seems that way. Well, we, well, we're doing a lot, of, a lot of things are going on. and don't want to extend, so we're, we're being due diligent here. That's right. Thank you, sir. Is there a motion to approve? Yeah, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a, uh, a motion to approve application. Uh, Number XSP number 23-1 uh, with conditions and modifications uh, in conformance with the resolution prepared by staff dated 413-23 with the 24 conditions listed. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Holinsky. Motion made by the Secretary, seconded by Commissioner Holinsky. Is there a discussion on a motion? Seeing none, whenever you're ready, Mr. Secretary, for roll call. Uh, Lou Fiore. Yes, approve. Linda DeGray. Four. Virginia Higley. Four. Francis Alimo. Four. Kiran Majwudar. Four. Kenneth Holinsky. Four. And John Petronella's four. 
The record show is unanimous to approve this application. Thank you. Members of commission, thank you very much. And I want to again thank you because that yes. site plan that you gave us is exactly the kind of information we were looking for from for a lot of things. So again, I, we do appreciate it. You thank do you. it enough your year, years, you learn. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Is there any old bit? No, no old business. Other business. Other business I think we need to bring up. We received the memo. I think all of you should have received it from uh, the applicants from 40 Edgewood Drive for a waiver. Um, so would staff please uh, respond to that? Yeah, problem. Take your time. Yes, it's uh, addressed to the Enfield Planning Zoning Commission. I, I, it was in our packet. Uh, I don't know. I, I, yes, I, I guess I guess it's okay for me to read it. Um, from Rachel Boulay and Daniels. You got it? Yeah. So I guess uh, uh, we're basically they're asking for an extension, but there's a lot of commissioners that have no idea, myself included, what the original approval was for. So um, if if we could, we'd like to table that till the 27th. Yeah. And we'll get you the information on the project, yeah, so we'll get you know, you. be clear. Yeah, well, I think if we can, I think I. That condition was. Yeah, I think we want we we probably want to know a lot more a lot more detail yeah. on that, not just the condition, but maybe the whole analysis of what that is. Is that applicable to everybody here? Mm -hmm. Sure. So I'll entertain a motion to table this item. Can we talk about so the, move. the record about this uh, letter? Second. You did yeah, yeah, a dated re state received. It's yeah, not Martin. stamped or anything. This no. is right. oh, it's staff. I didn't know it's not stamped. Yeah, it's not stamped or anything. No. no. So it's. We, the, the date on it is March 25th. 25th. It should be stamped in and stamped into the record. Right, and we just tabled it. Right, but th th this, yeah, but this yeah. Is a letter just appeared here. Where did it come from? Somebody no, called? it was in your packet. I know, but somebody, it was on a table. No, it was, no, in, your it was in your packet. Was it? Yeah, yeah, it was in your packet. So again, we were, we have a lot of questions. I, we'll make a motion to table just to be clear. Yeah, so my we can letter, get for that. letter we'll, dated we'll March sure 25th, 2023. 27th. March 25th on this letter. So March 25th, 2023, oh, from Me Rachel Boulay and Daniel Cizos. Um, so, who made the motions, please? I made a motion. Mr. DeGray seconded by yeah. Vice Chairman Higley. All those in favor of tabling this to the next meeting, signify by saying aye. 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 Let the record show is unanimous. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. There's no enforcement reports. Mm -hmm. Is there any correspondence? I just mentioned that one. Do you have, you have something, Commissioner DeGray? I'm just to so the chair, the to the staff, um, well, have we gotten any timeline as when we're going to start uh, our regulations, our workshops on our regulations? Any? You we're working on it. Okay. <laughs> I, 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 just I mean, we work. are. We really are. Yeah. We just... Um, yeah. okay. Still working on we the We have to work on the housing plan first. I think, no offense, I think no. that needs to get done. As, as soon as you guys are comfortable now at the POC, I know you're doing work. Absolutely. On, so do you think that would be the next meeting for the housing, or do you think it would be, the, or do you want to wait for the first meeting in May? I was, just because I think we have a lot to go, uh, we've, we've got a lot to review for the next meeting, and we've just, we're, we're about to receive four more applications. Yeah. Um, I was going to do it for the first meeting in May, but I could put it on for this next meeting. I'm, I'm just looking around. It's, yeah. it, it, we do have to get the housing done before, and that's yeah. we have to really want to get that done by July. By July for, for us. Oh, you know, I'll, 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 I think we might know. be able to put it on <laughs> yeah. for the next meeting. So I mean, it's basically just yeah. put it in proper format yep. and adopt it. Yeah. 
So again, be, we're going to do that before we do the regulation change. So you might want to go back again and reread the stuff in the POCD, the housing chapter, get familiarized. And if we have time, we'll tack it next meeting, but certainly in the May, in the May one. And then, excuse me, once we're done with that, we can start the regulation okay. stuff. Does that sound like a plan to everybody? Yeah. Yep. All right. Okay. Any other correspondence? Mm -hmm. Director of Planning Report? Is there anything tonight? I, I did have something and I cannot find where it is. And I think it may have fallen out of my other bag. Um, so we did get uh, some communication from East Longmeadow and they're proposing to put in a, um, a recycling facility for demolition de debris. And this is going to be directly north of where um, the Wynn Stanley building is going to be, 35 Bacon Road. So again, juxtaposed against both the, the lake communities. And actually, this is going to be directly adjacent to the headwaters of the Drawbuck Draw yeah. Brook. Yeah. Um, yeah, say that three times fast. <laughs> um, so um, we've, we have notified the Wetlands Commission and the Conservation Commission there and the lake communities. Um, I don't know whether we will send it. I think that we will probably just send them a, uh, a memo from the town just stating that we do have concerns about environmental issues and drainage and water quality. But I do believe that some of the commissioners, well, Jen, you probably know better than I, that you might be going to the actual public hearing up there. Yeah, I was, uh, it was given to wetlands and um, it was quite, um, they broke it down. Everything is conducted in-house, you know, inside. The trucks can only idle for five minutes and then they have to turn off. The uh, cover has to be on the top. Nothing can be done outside, nothing. And um, they have safety procedures in place. It's a very well thought out, uh, on paper, it's a very well thought out plan. You won't see things floating down the road because they've, they've uh, covered all the bases. <clears throat> at least, yeah. at least, when they gave it to wetlands, that's what we saw. Yeah. Uh, one, one of the interesting things is that um, they are planning on utilizing the rail. That was, my, was that's what I was going to ask for about. They transporting the debris. Yeah. Yep. So Didn't they rip up the rail. That's, don't they have their big walk? It's, after, it's before that. Oh, it's before their their, uh, so their they, jogging it, walk. It's yep. right at the, the Mass Connecticut line. So they would actually just kind of like swoop down to where the where the. Um, the rail line actually exists because Massachusetts has turned that to a rails right. to trails. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so um, do I, I don't know how that plays in because the stories that I've heard is that it's probably going to be years till those improvements are made. And it would be interesting to see what the dimensions of the reclaimed materials are after they get finished pulverizing them inside the closed building, you know? It would be nice if they were enclosed in the rail cars, but they didn't give us that information. Yeah. But I got the distinct impression that uh, they're going to really do some serious um, re reconfiguration of the de dem demolished materials. So from, yeah. from, what I, from what I read, I think the rail is you know, contingent to it. That's part of the whole operation. Uh, the rail cars, well, I read on Long Meadow News, you know, from the town and from the residents, the rail cars are going to drive right into it. Oh, yeah. right. They're going to pull right that's in. That's a long process. They're going to have to get Connecticut They're going to put a spur in there. I, that's what I'm, I mean, that's what I'm, I'm more interested about the rail line. Because yeah. are they going to really do that? And Half that rail's shot from Manchester well, all the way up here. What about we're across 190? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, half that reel is shot all the way from East Hartford to Manchester. I know that's been a, a, so a they, that's been an issue out there with the guy that rents the rail line yeah. and yeah, yeah, he's yeah. doing work and fixing it up. I mean, yeah. to me, the most interesting part about it is the rail line. Yeah, right. Well, yeah. I think for our community, it's the rail line. Yeah, I understand the lake issues, yeah. but it's the rail line, and that would change yeah. our community. I, I was concerned about noise as well, reverberating through the yeah. lake communities. Uh, so and and, and uh, Jabba Brook rising and stuff. And the impact on Jabba Brook, if there's any, I, and I, I know that's wetlands issue. Yeah. It's not mine, but so it's that's why we looked at. I mean, downstream how flooding. Is, yeah, yeah. So there's not really anything we could do. It's, it's another. You can't 
really do anything about it. But I mean, the rail line, yes. I mean, that's a bigger issue to me because it comes through our community. Yeah. yeah. Right through. Right. Yeah. Right through Skinny Cove. Right. Boop, boop, boop. Right by the goats. We're yeah. the right by the goats and the solar farm. You know, we don't want to scare right the goats. The goats okay. and the solar farm on West Street, <laughs> Haz Hazard Avenue, yeah. uh, Broadbrook. Broadbrook. Broad yeah, the whole thing. Right. Yeah, through, right, right through. All the way through. So I. So from what I understand, I don't think the bridge over 190 is safe for rail right now. So this is going to be interesting. Yeah, the overpass yeah. where the trains cross at uh, 190 yeah. by the brewery. Yeah. Oh, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Right, okay, yeah, I, I, I'm visualizing oh, it. Mean, that's a, There's a culvert there. The yeah, the bridge. Over the Skidical River. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, right. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah uh, south of that, I'm sorry. They just reinforced that about five yeah. years ago. They, did the, they reinforced the foundations. They did? Yeah. yeah. When they took yeah. the dam out. <clears throat> hmm, that's interesting. The, yeah, imagine the traffic impact, mm -hmm. even if yeah. because of the rail crossings traffic? and stop. You know what? What do you call that? I'm not. I don't know what the, the real terminology yeah. for that is. The uh, what do you, rail crossings. Yeah. Rail crossing. Yeah. You're backing up on hazard on 190. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I did read no hazardous materials. Yeah. I did read that. Yeah. So um, that's a good thing yeah. for the rail. You know, if they're going to start putting hazardous materials on rails, which we've been seeing happening around the country, mm -hmm. we don't want that, yeah. or we want to know about it. So you'll stay on top of this for you? I'm sure you'll stay on top because inland and you're going out and. We're staying on top of it. How about if you stay on track? <laughs> stay on track. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we stay on track. <laughs> oh, no pun intended. <laughs> All right, any opportunity? I, I, I just do, do want to say that I do know that the DOT and Amtrak have been, not Amtrak, but the, the, the DOT yeah. rail division have been working on that, okay. that section from East Windsor to here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It'd be interesting yeah. to see. Mm -hmm. All right. Any opportunities to resolve issues? Huh, so many. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, administrative approval requests? None? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, we, yeah, we yeah, have one. one. Yeah, we yes, have one. We yeah. Yep. Thank 13. you. Right. So this was just to, um, um, they're going to be installing some electric vehicle charging stations um, at 51 Palumba Drive. So that's just replacing parking stalls with some EV chargers okay. is that the approval that we did for gail toyota what, what is 51 at the post office or what 51 plumber which one was that we just approved gail uh, gail right next to i can't name the restaurant there's a restaurant right next to where they want to place them it's only about eight or ten i think stations but, oh and oh okay gotcha got okay yep yep okay, okay. They, um, Yep. Well, maybe it's a big It's a big white plaza. It's the big white plaza. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. They'll yep. be freestanding, yep. kind of out towards the front a little bit. Um, they had sufficient landscape area in terms of percentages. Their parking is actually kind of way over the requirement that they have. Um, so parking wasn't an issue. We will be talking, I think, when we do the reg amendments about parking. Right now, we're, we're, we're kind of just doing these things ad hoc in a way. Um, but we have had inquiries recently for one gentleman who wanted to do an actual, um, call it a gas station, but it's, it would be like an EV gas station, for lack of a better term, kind of freestanding unto, its, unto itself on its own parcel. So I, we're going to need to take a look at it with the regs and figure out some. So an EV charging station. Right. So I don't think you can yeah. say gas and EV in the same I think it, it that might have, not work. I, I think it would, I'm, I'm not sure if <laughs> it might be not right. Included it's like a little similarity. C, C store thing. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, like a, a new concept. Yeah. yeah. With EV. Who knows? But up and coming. If I remember when we approved um, the Noble project, there's going to be an EV yeah. charging area yeah. mm -hmm. as well as gas. Yep. Yeah. All right, Lori, hit us with the receipt of applications. All right, so um, we're still waiting for LaCroix to be submitted for the second half of that one. But um, there was some vacation. Yeah, yes. but that's long gone. Are you going to give that en engineer a call? Already have. Thank you very much. So. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so public hearing 3066, 600 Enfield Street. This is an application for a car wash, gas station, and convenience store. Shiraz Chaudhry, applicant Troiano Realty owner this is the property that is just north of where the new bagel place is yeah. get a gas you'll so, get a gas yeah so but it's already, it already was that yes but they're kind of redoing it and reconfiguring it and oh 
information. Okay. No, but it already was a gas yeah. station. We're going to get a new site plan. Okay, yeah. We're going to get a new site plan. Okay. Um, I already went through inland wetlands, just yeah. to let everybody know, correct? Yeah. Yep. And then public hearing 3067 at 161 Post Office Road. This was actually um, submitted and withdrawn before because they're the maps and um, this is the one with the open space that wasn't deeded to us and the town council decided they didn't want it and so this is coming back. Um, I remember that. Public hearing 3068, 27 Maple Avenue, application for a restaurant with liquor sales. Which one was that one? Sabora's Mexicanos LLC applicant. What, 27 what Maple Avenue one? LLC. Pardon? 27 I, I, Maple. 27 Maple, public Maple. hearing 3068. Yeah, Maple. That one I haven't looked at yet. And then SPR 1915, 7 Pearson Way, yeah. for a 41,275 square foot warehouse expansion. It, this will, it will still be under 100,000 square feet. And this is, if I can, I, this is if I, you went Pearson, I mean, you might not know, if you went Pearson's Way and you just kept going till we couldn't, can't go any farther, I, right? I think yeah. so, yes. Yeah, okay. Yes, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> just trying to get my bearings where that is. And then I just want to say one thing, and that would be happy birthday, Matt. Oh, happy birthday, Matt. Hey, Matt. Congratulations. She bought me bagels. So. Congra congratulations, you made it another year. <laughs> it's always good. <laughs> happy birthday, Matt. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. So we had that. Welcome. So we have those pile of applications on top of the other ones we mentioned last meeting that are due. So it sounds like next meeting or next couple will be busy. We'll be busy. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. We have any idea when 161 post is going to be on our agenda? They're pending at wetlands, so probably May. May. What is that? It's okay. Oh. They just came. Yep. 161 post office? Po well, it's in the corner of post in Town Farm in Raffia. Oh, I know that piece. Yeah, yeah. you know the piece. Yep. We all know the piece. What's it going to be? Okay. <laughs> okay. Is there anything else? I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Oh, motion Second. made by uh, Vice Chairman DeGrace, seconded by Vice Chairman Higley to adjourn. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Let the record show we're adjourning this meeting of planning and zoning at 8.23. Thank you very much. Good night, everybody.